Do you remember when you had the chicken pox, all that misery and those ugly scabs? Well, that's one right of childhood that we can finally be rid of thanks to the chicken pox vaccine. Now, many of you may think, oh, what's the big deal? Everybody got chicken pox when I was growing up. But among the four million cases of chicken pox that used to occur each year, some kids didn't make it. About 100 children died and another 10,000 were hospitalized with serious complications. The vaccine against chickenpox is helping, but since it's only been around in this country since 1995, many older children and even some preschoolers are really not protected yet. So to bring us up to date on what we need to do to protect our kids, I want you to meet our special guest today. We have Dr. Nathan Littman, and uh, Dr. Littman is a professor of pediatrics at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and a specialist in infectious disease, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you. My pleasure. And right next to him, we have a chicken pox veteran. <laughs> there aren't very many people that can claim that title. Teresa Gorey nursed four of her five children through the chicken pox vaccine, or the chicken pox ordeal, oh, yeah. and she has one of her children here with her today and that's the lovely Miss Rachel and welcome to both of you we love having you here on the show um, Nathan let's start with you and talk a little bit about the medical aspect of chicken pox what is it how do you get it okay uh, chicken pox is caused by a virus a person with active chicken pox sheds the virus into the air if a person who hasn't had chicken pox breathes in that virus they will develop chicken pox Chicken pox is a highly contagious illness. Merely walking down in an aisle of a supermarket or being in the same room as an individual with chicken pox is enough of an exposure to transmit the virus to that person. Wow. Now, once you get exposed to chicken pox, you develop the, the whole syndrome and then you make antibodies to it. And then that's what we call natural immunity. At that point, you're pretty clear. Yes. Okay, all right. Well, we have some pictures that we want to show our audience about what one can expect when they uh, are exposed to chicken pox. So tell us what we're looking at here. Okay, these are the initial lesions, the beginning chicken pox, which actually look like little blisters um, surrounded by a red area. Okay. Um, this now is the uh, face of a child, and you can see around the chin and the nose, the lesions. The, the chicken pox start off typically on the face and on the body. Mm -hmm. And here you can see the back of someone, and all of these lesions are scabbed or crusted, and there are multiple lesions here. Um, and you can imagine that the usual patient with chickenpox has three to 500 lesions. Wow. And finally, the lesions tend not to occur so much on the hands, but um, you can see some of the uh, uh, pox on the hands in this patient. Right. Now, Miss Rachel, I understand that um, you have a little story about having chicken pox because you have a little scar from your chicken pox. Tell us about that. Well, my dad was, he was um, giving me an oatmeal bath when I was four and he saw a loose one and so he pulled it off. Mm -hmm. And then when I got out of the bathtub, he saw another one and so he pulled it off. And so as a result of that, you have scars, but honestly, I can't see them. They're on your face, and I can't see them. Can you show me where they are? One's right around here, and yeah. one's over here. Oh, uh, well, you know what? I don't think you have anything to worry about. You're so pretty until no one's going to see those little tiny scars when you grow up, so nothing to worry about. But that can happen. You can develop scars. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, the vaccine, because that's really what this whole story is about, is avoiding these scars that children experience when they're exposed to chicken pox. Okay. The vaccine was developed originally in Japan from the virus recovered from a blister of a child with chicken pox. It was then grown in cells in the laboratory, and as it was grown in the cells in the laboratory, it became less able to grow in children. So in fact, the vaccine is a live but weakened chicken pox virus. We give the vaccine to children 12 to 15 months of age. About one in five children will experience some soreness at the site of the injection. About one in 10 will have a low-grade fever. And about one in 25 will develop a little bit of a bumpy rash. Um, the number of uh, bumps or blisters is usually uh, around five and may occur either just at the place where the shot was given or around the body. Okay, well now, Teresa, our chicken pox veteran, you've had some real stories to tell us about chicken pox. You had a daughter that was supposed to be a flower girl, and she oh, got she chicken was. pox. Tell Her us sister. about that. Okay, what happened? Um, she had the chicken pox, uh, and she wasn't contagious by the time the wedding came, but she had this you know, she was covered, right? Yeah, her face. She had scabs on her face, yeah. and you couldn't put anything on them because then you risk getting them infected. Uh -huh. um, but people looked at her a little strangely at the wedding and asked questions and kind of avoided her. Sure. And, 
uh, which I felt bad for her, right. uh, knowing that they weren't contagious. Yeah. Now, your son got chicken pox, but he didn't do it at a reasonable time when it would have been convenient for you. Is no, that right? No, <laughs> no. Um, my son was 13 then, and he had been exposed to them many times. Uh, I sent him over to his friend's house to get him infected so that he would get him, and we could get it all <laughs> over with. You were trying to get it over with. Uh, for like three years. Uh -huh. um, and he never got them, <laughs> as contagious as they are. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until his brother came down with them when he was in preschool, uh, three, four years old. Yeah. And two weeks later, Mike was away on a uh, school trip. Uh, about three and a half hours away from the house. Of course. That's the only time to get chicken pox, and right? The, school, the, the trip nurse called me up and said, uh, listen, we think he's coming down with the chicken pox. He has the fever. He's starting to get a rash. You're going to have to come get him. And yeah. I was like, but he's already infected everybody. It's too late. Sure, and, sure. And you're coming home tomorrow. Right, and, but you had to go. So three but, hours you had to drive to get your son. Three hours there, three and hours, hours back. back. Of course. But you have a younger child that's actually had the vaccine. Yes, Skyler. And so that's a relief at least to know that you're not going to go through that yes. again. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, um, in some cases, though, uh, Dr. Littman, children need more than one vaccine. How does, how does the vaccinating schedule work? Well, if children get the vaccine before 13 years of age, they only need a single injection. But um, adolescents over 13 years of age need to have two separate shots separated by at least a month. Okay. What about children who get the vaccine and they come to my office and they've got chicken pox and mom is really annoyed because she's saying, you know what, that's why I got this vaccine for my child so I wouldn't have to go through this. Well, the chicken pox vaccine is 100% effective in preventing moderate or severe chicken pox. But it's only about 90% effective in preventing any chicken pox. But when a child develops chicken pox after vaccine, it's typically a much milder illness with many fewer chicken pox blisters, lower fever, and a much more rapid recovery. In fact, sometimes it's even difficult to determine that it really is chicken pox. Okay. What about children who may have illnesses? Are there some that really shouldn't get the chicken pox vaccine? Yes. If a child has an acute fever with an illness, they shouldn't get it. If children have weakened immune systems because of either disease or medication, they shouldn't get it. Um, an adolescent or adult woman who's pregnant shouldn't get the vaccine. Okay. But the average child, like little Miss Rachel over here, they're fine for getting it. There's no big concern. There's no reason for the, uh, the average child to not get the vaccine. No, the usual child should get the vaccine. Okay. And again, when should the child get the vaccine? At Usually it's uh, between 12 and 15 months. 12 and 15 months. Okay. So kids that are older, is it too late? No, no, no. They can get the vaccine at any time. Okay. All right. Now, uh, I, I'd want to go back to you, Teresa, because you know firsthand what it's like in the old days before the vaccine. You were literally locked in your house with your kids. You can't go anywhere. Nobody will come near you. You had five children, and you you literally had to stay in your home and stay with these children because they had the chicken pox. And they couldn't leave their home. They couldn't go to school. And so it was a, a, a lifestyle issue for you at one point. Yeah, I was just fortunate that I didn't work at that time because you look at the, the amount of work. Yeah. You can't get daycare, can't, well, who's gonna watch your kids? Yeah, well, and that's something to think about when you're trying to make the decision about, should I do this, should I not do this? You know, because if your child gets sick with chicken pox, chances are you're gonna have to stay home. Oh. And that's what happened oh, wow. with you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, Rachel, how do you feel about all this? Do you remember having the chicken pox? Kinda. You kind of do? But you also remember for sure that you had a scar there, huh? Yeah. So now you're, is it a younger sister or a younger brother? A younger sister. A younger sister is not going to be able to get the chicken pox and get those scars. So that's the good mm -hmm. news, right? All right. Thank you guys so much for being here on the show. You are fabulous. And thanks for the information because it's really important for people to know about this. I thank you all for watching us as always. I'm Dr. Winnie King and we'll see you next time on Keeping Kids Healthy.